My husband drinks a lot of this drink and he always saves me the covers. Although I haven't saved stuff in like a year and a half, two years now because I have a huge amount of this stuff. So I've decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to, oh my goodness, it almost completely fits. Imagine that. Uh, I'm going to take this and when I cut it, I think I'm gonna cut on the inside here. I'm gonna cut on the inside of the crease and I think that will be just enough to be the same as that. And yes, it's brown and ugly, but it'll be covered up, it'll be nice. And I think this is two and a half inches tall. So we're going to just give it a whack with the cutter and pray it's the right height. Let, let's just measure. <laughs> My look is not so good just eyeballing stuff. Yeah, it's two and a half, okay. Should I measure twice? All right, so let's see what the width, if this will fit in there. Will I be able to close the book around it? No, so I need to shave a hair off of this. So I'm just gonna shave, let's see, it needs to be one and a quarter inches wide. Let's see what we got here. Voila. Yay, all right, so we're gonna cover this with the material. And the reason we're covering this is because she will still be able to see in between the signatures. So you don't want this brown stuff to show in between people's signatures. So I probably didn't need to cover this, but I was gonna try a different way of cover, uh, do it finishing the book and it didn't work out, but I'm still gonna use this chipboard. It's a good chipboard. Alrighty, so now we need paper, 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 anyone, paper. Here we go, paper. All right. So, uh, let's see. Truly, I do not need to do a great job covering this. Because, not really gonna see the back side of it. So I don't care how lovely it looks. I just need for it to be adequate to cover it up and then it's gonna be glued, it's gonna be glued on top of this. So it doesn't have to be completely covered and beautiful like I did with the other one. So here we go. Okay, so let's scoot this up a little bit. Make sure we have enough to do it. And I'm gonna push this in a little bit. And I'm just gonna cut off some off the bottom. And yes, I'm still gonna do the corners. I just don't need for it to, to meet in the middle. That's the only thing I was trying to say. Is I don't need for the paper to meet in the middle. It's really not necessary because it's going to be glued onto this book so no one's ever going to see it. Lord, I hope not. I hope nobody tears the book apart. <laughs> okay. Let's see. There we go. This. And then, do we do this? Did I fold it on the edge? No, I did not, okay. So this goes here. There we go. Let me buff this up a little bit so it sticks. That's the problem with these um, packagings that have this slick, um, slick stuff coating, is it doesn't adhere to the glue as well as if it's smooth. So if you just kind of take an emery board and rough it up a bit, it does fine. I forgot to do that to one of the buttons I made yesterday and the silly thing came completely unglued so then I had to rough it up and start all over. Okay. You know when you do this stuff 
for the most part, attention to detail is really important, especially if you sell your stuff on Etsy, because people, you think, well, it's okay, and then people write back and go, oh my word, this is a mess, or they leave you a bad review, and you're like, oh, I didn't think it was bad. I wouldn't have sold it if I thought that, but you know, other people's impressions are different than what yours are. Okay, so now let's tuck them in. Tuck it in a little bit. Whoops, that's a little too much. Well, there's hardly anything to work with there. Okay, this one has a little bit more. Push this in. And then push this one in a little bit. And glue. Now this is the part I'm going to sew on. And the reason I didn't want to sit, um, sew through the chipboard, it is much thicker than this kind of I don't know if you can say this is chipboard. I guess it's like the cheapest chipboard ever, what cereal boxes and containers are made out of. But the stuff that the rest of the book is made out of is good, hard, commercial chipboard that I ordered off of Amazon. But this does not need to be because it's going to be glued right into the book. I learned how to do this from Corey Dahman. Okay. I have to let this dry. And now I have to make it, see, it's not, it's not the greatest quality cardboard, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to take it and I'm going to sew it in here. I need to figure out what the paper is that's going to go over this once I fold all this stuff down. I want to be sure that when I cover this that I have... A piece of paper that looks nice here. I don't want to just show her this. This looks terrible, so I don't want it to be like that. But let me let this dry. All right, so now I need to make a template so I figure out how to put the five signatures. So this is where you use scrap paper. Don't do anything you care about with, you know, like I'm, nope. Let me find some scrap paper. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so funny. All the scrap paper in the world is never where you need for it to be when you need it. All right, so I'm going to trace this. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to divide it up. Because one of those signatures in, the, in her bundle is super duper fat. I mean, it's really fat. Let's cut this a little better. All right, I can find half. And I know this is where the holes will be because I think that's how I got these as I folded the paper up that way. Let us see. So I'm dividing this into thirds. And I don't have to use a ruler or measure this. It's a very simple process. I'm gonna open it and then I'm gonna take a look at where the holes are. That's exactly what I did because they match this exactly. The center, the center hole for this is right there where that grease is. These are right here and this is there. So that I, okay, I don't have to worry about that part. What I have to worry about now is where to put the signatures in here because, okay, I'll fold that. And that's gonna give me three. Oops, let's do this straight. Let's not get sloppy here. All right, so. All right, so I'm going to take my pencil so I can see this because it's white and it's really hard to see. And it's hard for me to see when I'm sewing it too, not just for you to see it, but it's hard for me to see it when I sew. So it's this way. That's first one. Halfway is this one. And it may be a little off from the crease. Uh, let's see, where is the crease? There we go. I don't think I'm quite straight. Crease. Is that the crease? Yeah, it is. Okay. And then this one. Now, I have to explain to you, I'm not going to sew on these lines. I know that seems odd, but it's going to be really hard to have to figure out how to fold five. And if... I can't put 
a signature here. That would have been one, two, three, four, and then a signature here because this will be in the gully. This will be too tight. So if I had three signatures, this would be perfect. But there's five. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to figure out how to get five in here. So I may have to do one here. Scoot this to one a little bit over. I'm going to have to adjust the lines by eyeballing it because I don't know how to fold this to do the five. So I don't want a signature in the fold where the book closes. So I'm going to move the signature. This would be so signature number five. Right there. So that's number one. And that's number two. And then I'm going to move the other one that's not quite in the center. Give it a little less room. Three. And see, now I've taken up two. I've done too much. So I think three. I will leave this one here. So let me get rid of this one. I will leave the center one the way it is. And I might have to scooch this one in just a hair. We'll see. I'll know when I lay the signatures down to look at them. Because the, I think the first signature in here is like the fattest one. The number, signature number one. Oh, there's four signatures. I thought there were five. Oh, there's only four. One, two, three, four. I thought there were five signatures. One, two, three. Four. Oh, okay. Well, that just changes the whole thing. <laughs> I thought there were five. They're so fat. Alrighty then. All right, so here's half and then half of half. All right, so then this will be signature middle. They really don't look straight at all. The middle ones look better than the other ones. Before, where's the other hole? There it is. There's that hole. Yeah, they look nice, but it's the other ones that don't look so good. Are you guys straight? One way you can see is to hold the flashlight up and shine it through your signature. Okay, these guys are much better. So let's see, we'll do one, two, three, four. All right, so I think I need to move this hole, which was that one right there. Now I just made it bigger. Oh my, okay. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One thing that's really important when you poke a hole, poke a hole into the opposite direction you think 
you need to go. Like, you would think that I would poke it, like when you do a book, you think, well, I'm gonna poke it on the inside, but what happens is the pucker part or the part that sticks out from the paper will be on the outside of your book and that looks unsightly. So when you do this, you have to hold this up to here and poke your holes in this way. Do you understand? So that the rough part, when you poke it through the paper, is where nobody can see it. Okay, so let us see what kind of mess we can get into here. I might have to re-sew these. I might have to do this over. All right, so we have ye old waxed thread. And I don't need a curved needle for this one. I need something straight. I'm going to fast forward through this because this is entirely too long. <laughs> so uh, get ready for fast forward for sewing because this is going to get a little crazy. Okay, while I was, what was I doing? Oh, transferring files off of the camera to the computer. I played around with the spacing again and made another insert because I could see that these were not spaced as nicely as they could have been. So I redid them. I poked the holes in the new one. So it's good to go. So let's sew and see what we, oh, <laughs> it's not in the needle. Let's see what happens. So I may sew the first one in and then number two, three, and four will be on fast forward. All right, so here we are with this piece. This is the first one because I rubber banded the rest together so I wouldn't get confused. This is the right side up. And we start in the middle. No knot. Get all this out of the way. This is the middle of the first signature hole in the board. Then we're going to come up from the bottom. Go into the hole of the signatures, signature. This is just your basic three hole pamphlet stitch. I think this is probably one of the most popular ways that people bind books that are home book enthusiasts. I shouldn't say it like that. That doesn't sound right. Uh, that are book enthusiasts that do it from, <laughs> I don't know, anyway. All right, so there's that. So now we're going to take this and go back into the original hole we started with and back into the original signature. Now I ended up with two of the sides together. So this is on this side of the line and I'm just gonna thread it under here so that I can tie the knot on either side. I hope this works. Please let it work, please, please. There we go, look at that. Oh! I surprise myself sometimes. Well, actually a lot. <laughs> Clip that off. Then we're gonna do a lovely knot. And then do it the other direction. I don't know, they call that a square knot, I think. Who knows? I'm just doing it the way I saw. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to cut this. It scares me to cut it because I'm afraid that, you know, it might come undone. So let's just leave a little bit on there so in case anything happens. All right, so there's the first one that's right side up. All right, signature number two. This book is just lovely. She's done a great job. And I, I'm sure that her friend... We'll be thrilled to get this lovely book. Okay, in the middle again, into the second signature. We're going along this line right here. Again, no knot now. We tie the knot, whoops, we tie the knot at the end. Let's make sure we get that done. In the hole. It's right side up, right side up, right side up. Okay. I sewed one in backwards the other day. Not in this book, in something else. And I was like, uh-oh. 
Why does this look weird? Well, because Sweetie Pie here <laughs> sewed it in wrong. <laughs> okay, where's the hole? There we go. Here's the hole. It's going to go into the top of the second signature. In. Down. And let's find the proper hole, which is number two. Come on, where's the hole? Seriously, where's the hole? Where's the hole? All right, this is not good that I cannot find the hole. That's because I'm poking in the wrong place. There's the hole, and there's the hole. <laughs> good thing I'm not a golfer. Let me loosen this up a little bit because I want to be able to, there we go, have enough at the end to tie the other half of the knot. Come on, do it. There we go, tighten her up. We go in the back here, into the signature, and out again. And you should never have your, your threads on the same side. So this one, they're both on this side this time. So we're just going to slide it under here. I'm going to make sure it's nice and taut. I don't want to have to sew this again. I'm not talking about her sending it back. I'm talking about me screwing up. <laughs> so let's tie the square knot this way. Then, uh, okay, then this way. Okay. All right. Where's that? Okay, so it's in there in the false spine, and they look pretty well spaced out. If you look, this one may be a little further over to the end, but that's because this is the first signature, and it's really fat. The, the last one I gave more room because, oops, because um, it's skinny, so I wanted to make sure there was enough room in there for that. All right, I hope these are in there straight. Then what will happen is this will all be covered. This will be glued on top of here. And then her book will be done. This will be all glued and flat. And then that will be the end of the book. So let's finish. Oh my word, what a mess. Uh, let's see, what do you have to do? We have to cut the corners. We already did that. What we need to do is glue. So I like to, I don't, everyone has a preference. Some people like doing it this way first. Some people like doing it this way first. I, I do it this way first. All right, so I'm going to squeeze that on there. So 
Some people use a paintbrush, make it smooth. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in as to what I use. And today must be a finger day. <laughs> There's so much stuff on my desk, I don't even know if I could find a paintbrush even if I wanted one to glue with. Glue brush. I want that nice and snug. Now I need to get the glue off my fingers because I don't want to mess up her book. All right, next I'm going to tuck the corners in a little bit with the bone folder. I hate covering up that pretty blue paper, but I just don't, uh, there was just not too many options for me to fix this book. All righty, let's see what we can do here. Oh, all right, we're going to glue here. Now, I want to make sure it goes in the valley so that the book can be open and closed with little or no distress on the page paper. So far, so good. I hate to say that because I just know something's going to happen. I've tried so many things. <laughs> okay. Well, do this side. I think for me the hardest part are the valleys for the where the book opens and closes and not cracking the paper. Okay, now you're going to clog up. So close to the end, and now you're going to clog. Silly thing. Uh, okay, let me rub this down a little bit. And then we'll go up and in. So I'm going to fold it a little bit while I do it, and I'm not going to mash that down until I do this first. Because I want to give that part all the space it needs so it can open and close. We're going to go this side. We're going to do it in the valley again. I'm not going to mash that down until I am sure that this part has all the paper it needs to fold. All right, so there we go. I hope this is looking good. So now I have to figure out. I'm going to leave. I'm going to let this dry. I, I'm not going to fool around with it anymore today because I don't want to crack the the edges here putting undue stress on it when it could dry and be all happy dried so I'm going to put this in here and take a look and that will be a finished book that doesn't have alligator mouth and I could put it this way or this way either way the cover is just barely going to take care of the signatures being sticking out from the edge see I got space yeah so this will be what the book is like afterwards compared to what it was before I will be sure to put pictures at the end of the video I will insert photographs um, but I want to let this dry overnight push that up a little higher I need for this to dry overnight and for me not to touch it or fool with it just leave it alone and then while this is drying I need to find some paper to cover up this section and then the back section and glue this in let it dry some more and then it will be going in the mail back to North Carolina where it came from and then hopefully she'll have room to put a little bit it I'm sure she will overpack it because <laughs> I gave her enough room and I'm gonna tell her look you can put stuff in it because I gave you some room for here and just a wee bit here so that if it gets any fatter it'll st you'll still be able to put some kind of a rubber band or an elastic on it and it'll be just fine okay so stay tuned for the last portion this is going to sit here overnight and dry and then i will pick it up again tomorrow <laughs>